How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Weather Sponge 5000 and in this video we're going to focus on Tropical Storm Philippe where we have seen an interesting change with the European model where now as you can see the European model wants to take a landfall right over Atlantic Canada as a 983 millibar tropical cyclone and we could see impacts as far west as the United States as well especially if we continue to see a uh, shift further westward with the trajectory of this storm system. We're also going to talk about the the possibility of tropical storm Sean developing right around the Western Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico because we do see that as we approach early next week we could see an Eastern Pacific tropical cyclone develop and that could provide the Gulf of Mexico with much needed energy for a tropical cyclone to have the possibility of developing we're gonna take a close look at these two um, at um, this next possibility over the Gulf of Mexico as well as the potential of Hurricane Felipe making landfall along Atlantic Canada. So again, we see no changes regarding the global tropics hazards outlook provided from the Climate Prediction Center, where the Climate Prediction Center is now still outlining an, um, a pretty large area between the southern Gulf of Mexico and the Western Caribbean, where tropical cyclone activity is possible. And this includes um, the area just off the coast of the southeast, so we want to be aware of that as well. And even moving on to the week ending October 17th, the area still the same area is still outline um, with the possibility of tropical cyclone development so we're definitely gonna pay very close attention to um, the global tropics hazards outlook over the next few days and since the climate prediction center has been very persistent on this area at least having the possibility of tropical cyclone development it's suddenly good to at least be aware at this point right around the um, central american region as well as potentially the gulf coast Shifting our focus a little bit further eastward, we see Tropical Storm Philippe, which earlier today made landfall in the small island of Barbuda, and we do see there's plenty of convective activity going on on the eastern half of this storm system, plenty of dry air on the western half as there's still a pretty large pocket of dry air that's definitely um, inhibiting the storm from really intensifying much more than a weak tropical storm and it's actually going to remain weak until it moves a little bit further northward because you could probably tell by the water vapor imagery the area just to the north of tropical storm fleet becomes very moist unstable so that will allow for uh, strengthening in the more long-term future but for right now it should remain a weak tropical storm but you don't want to underestimate it um in the lesser antilles just because the wind speed not, might not be that strong because just look at the amount of convective activity you're seeing this is producing a heavy amount of rainfall so especially in the higher elevations of some of these mountains flash flooding is certainly a concern so you want to be aware of that especially if you live in flood prone areas at and this is expected to continue over the next 24 hours along with gusty winds and life-threatening rip currents along on the coast. So now let's take a look back at what the European model is stating when it comes to relative humidity. So if we were to continue to move forward or at least back from where I was. So let's take a look at the forecast right around where we're at right now. So this is where Tropical Storm Philippe is. Like I said, it's going to struggle for the next few days, at least in the near future. I'll say the next three days because there's still going to be a pretty large area of dry air on the western half. I'll keep the storm lopsided when it comes to convective activity and tropical cyclones tend to struggle when the storm is a little bit too lopsided because we're not seeing the strong winds or convergence occur on all sides of this storm system which produces just a less efficient heat engine and a lot less lift around the center of circulation when we see one um one half of the storm system that's a little bit too dry and that's exactly what we're seeing this storm doesn't really strengthen much as this moves northward in the short term future however once it moves further northward, like I said, this upper level low that was hovering right over the Bahamas over the past several days is expected to move a little bit further northward, a little bit further eastward as well, to where this storm system would encounter a more unstable environment and less stability in general for this storm system to have a, a better chance of strengthening. And another thing too with this upper level low is that there's going to be quite a bit of cool air, especially on the western half. And once that cool air in the southern half of this storm system that's when we're going to see an enhanced amount of instability which means that the storm's pressure will drop and it'll definitely lose 
a lot of its tropical characteristics by the time it moves this far up north. Right around the latitude at which it reaches the Cape Hatteras area of North Carolina, it's suddenly going to start to lose a lot of its tropical characteristics. Of course, what will contribute to that is the cooler sea surf temperatures a little bit further northward. Of course, since we're approaching the month of October, the sea surf temperatures will quickly cool down further northward below the 80 degree threshold. So after this point, it'll definitely need plenty of instability to keep this storm going. And that's ex and that's what's expected because we're also going to see a pretty strong mid latitude trough move through the northeast at around the same time period. That'll enhance the wind speed, enhance the cool air on the western half, and that'll overall enhance the storm's intensity as it makes landfall along Atlantic Canada. Now, there's still a high amount of uncertainty whether it'll actually make landfall around Canada or potentially as far west as the United States or not. Because if we were to take a look at what the GFS model is stating, the GFS model isn't agreeing that this is going to make landfall at all. And in fact, brings this storm far from the United States and Canadian coasts. And the reason why is because... The GFS model expects this ridge just to the north of it to not necessarily be strong enough to trap it or steer it far enough to the um, to the west. Um, so the GFS model would want to steer out to sea thanks to uh, how strong this trough is. Um, and there's also a smaller ridge located over here that isn't strong enough to trap this storm. And in fact, the pressure gradient between this ridge and this low will enhance the easterly wind or the westerly winds just enough to steer it out to sea far from the United States. Um, so in the G so the in the GFS models case, it isn't at all confident it's gonna make landfall at all. And hopefully that's the best case scenario. Um, hopefully that is a scenario that does occur since it is the best case scenario. And uh, let me show you guys the 500 millibar height anomaly. It gives a better idea of what I'm talking to you guys about. So this is where Philippe is right now. There's going to be an upper level low located right over this area. And how strong this ridge is as well as this ridge. And if these ridges could somehow um, combine to create a stronger area of ridging just to the northeast of it. Then we would definitely see a much higher possibility this would move a little bit further westward to where a landfall in Canada would certainly be possible and maybe as far west as the United States that is a little bit of a stretch I'll still say if this were to make landfall it'll likely be in Canada but who knows if we see somehow see a ridge that's strong enough and this upper level low somehow become strong enough and be in a position where it could uh, um, enhance the wind speed from the east and steer a little bit further westward then maybe that possibility will occur i won't completely rule that out but in the gfs model scenario it wants to steer it further um all the way to the east because the ridging isn't strong enough and we see this chop dig down deep enough and uh, deepen just enough to the point where we um it'll weaken the ridging enough to create a strong westerly flow to steer this out to sea the european model of course is taking a different scenario expects the ridging to be a lot stronger also expects philippe to be weaker which in fact i think will enhance the chance it moves a little bit further um eastward because um or westward because the stronger philippe is the less likely at least initially the less likely it is to make landfall around canada and new england for two reasons for one thing is that if philippe ends up being a little bit stronger then that would weaken the ridging just to the east of it just enough to the point where this low pressure system could pretty much pull it out to sea as there will be a strong enough pressure gradient between this ridge and this low to steer the very weak Philippe out to sea and or at least a stronger Philippe out to sea um, as this um, as Philippe would be strong enough to weaken this ridging just to the east of it. However, if we were to see um, Philippe end up being a little bit weaker, then that means that the ridging would be a little bit stronger. Um, Philippe wouldn't be strong enough to weaken this ridging. And another thing too is that since Philippe would, um, in a weaker scenario, would have lower cloud tops, that means a stronger upper level winds, which would be coming from the um, west in this scenario, wouldn't have as much of an effect when it comes to the storm's trajectory. If we were to take a look at the winds in the upper levels, we see that 
the strong upper level winds are coming from the west which means that if the cloud tops were a little bit higher and the overall circulation of the storm was a little bit taller then the upper level winds would have a higher uh, impact when it comes to the storm's trajectory so if we were to see Philippe end up being a little bit weaker at least during its initial stages and that would enhance the possibility we'll see a landfall right up along um, Canada and New England because of course a stronger Philippe would weaken the ridging just enough to um, to move further eastward um, and also a stronger Philippe would have higher cloud tops which means that the stronger westerly upper level winds would have more of an influence to steer this eastward so the strength of Philippe will be key we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to how much it strengthens how much it potentially doesn't um strengthen as it moves as it continues to head further northward as well, i'll definitely keep tabs on that over the next few days but how strong this ridge is um and how strong philippe is will be key so i'll keep you guys updated if we do see any changes with the forecast it's still way too uncertain to say if a landfall will occur along atlanta canada the computer models um, at least the two main computer models are completely in a large disagreement at this time even though it's not even that far out into the future because by the time um philippe would make landfall around atlantic canada that would be at around the 120 hour mark which is only five days away which of course there's still uncertainties regarding a storm system that's five days from landfall but definitely not something that's like let's say eight days from landfall so it is a little bit rare to see the such a huge disparity between the two main computer models um but um when the storm system is only potentially five days when the time frame is really only um between now and five days out um regarding the uncertainty so um that's only something we're gonna need to pay close attention to we're gonna need to see which computer model caves into the other but i will definitely keep you guys updated over the next few days now the next thing we're gonna focus on is the potential of tropical storm philippe developing anywhere between the western caribbean or the southern gulf of mexico so if we were to take a look at how the gulf of mexico and the caribbean will look over the next several days we do see that it's gonna remain relatively dry thanks to a pretty strong ridge moving through um this area of the united states um and that will create very stable conditions of course not conducive for tropical cyclone development however if we were to take a look at this trough moving through there is expected to be plenty of moisture that's going to move along with the tail end of this storm system and that could potentially set the stage for tropical cyclone development especially if this um eastern pacific hurricane that's expected to develop does move further northward the good news is that at least in the latest run of the gfs model the gfs model isn't forecasting this eastern pacific hurricane to move as um north um to move um northward as quickly as it initially anticipated which means that there won't be as much energy over the gulf of mexico however we still do see plenty of moisture um right around the october 11th october 12th time frame and along with the much warmer than average sea surf temperatures we're seeing and the instability that could be induced over this area thanks to the um thanks to the um cooler air mass that's going to be just behind this influx of moisture moving through then we could potentially see the possibility of tropical cyclone development right over the southern um gulf of mexico and this could bring the moisture towards southern florida so florida you might need to pay close attention to this in the long term future um but i'll keep you guys updated the wind shear will be quite strong which could in fact um definitely inhibit this storm system from developing however if there is enough instability which is certainly possible during the month of october where we begin to see a lot more jet stream dips as well as a lot um as uh, as well as a lot more cooler air moving further southward into the gulf of mexico then we could potentially see just enough instability for tropical cyclone development it's still too uncertain to say but i'll certainly keep you guys updated if we do see any changes with what the computer models are stating the european model is forecasting much of the same thing does expect an influx of moisture to move in by the time we approach october 11th october 12th so the possibility certainly does exist we're just gonna need to wait and see if there will be enough instability um for 
um, th um, this area of moisture to develop. And plus, the dry air could be an inhibiting factor as well. So I'll keep you guys updated if we see any major changes with the forecast. So here's the National Hurricane Center's forecasted track when it comes to Tropical Storm Felipe as eventually the National Hurricane Center expects a storm system to develop into hurricane status just to the north of Bermuda and um, it's definitely going to have a, sh it's going to struggle over the next few days um, thanks to the amount of dry air that's expected to be just to the west of the storm system. However, it should eventually strengthen once it encounters a little bit more instability, a little bit more moisture associated with an upper level low that's located over Bermuda, I mean the Bahamas and we could potentially see this move northward into Atlantic Canada. We're just going to need to wait and see. There's still a high amount of uncertainty if this will make landfall or not. But I'll keep you guys updated and make sure the pay close attention in Bermuda because you could potentially see tropical storm force impacts out of this. Here's a current look at what the GFS ensemble members are stating. So um, uh, quite a bit of the GFS ensemble members do want to take Tropical Storm Philippe out to sea. However, interestingly, we do have some ensemble members. It's probably hard to see right here, but we do have some wanting to take this towards Atlantic Canada. So a landfall possibility certainly exists over Eastern Canada. So definitely pay close attention to that. And the possibility of Tropical Storm Sean in the southern Gulf of Mexico also exists since we do have several ensemble members wanting to develop a Tropical Storm-like system right over the Gulf of Mexico. The Euro ensemble members are definitely a lot more concerning, pretty much all of them taking landfall towards Atlantic Canada, but still far from certain because the GFS model is still a very reliable model, and that model wants to take um, most of the ensemble members in that model, take a storm that's not even close to Atlantic Canada, so we're definitely going to just need to wait um, to, um, to see if the GFS model will lean a little bit more to the European model, or the European model will lean a little bit more to the GFS model. So definitely don't take these on some members um, with a huge amount of certainty just yet, because there's still time um, for them to change. But regardless of whether this makes landfall or not, the United States East Coast should at the very least expect a high rip current risk since this is expected to at least strengthen into a hurricane. And even if it's hundreds of miles off the coast, that still could bring a dangerous rip current risk right up along the East Coast. But that's it for now, guys. I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like if you do enjoy this video. And I hope you guys all have a great day.